Time to turn our attention to something remarkable, Mark Murphy. Yes, this is uh, Roman Estoranka's coach, Roman Resnick. He uh, coaches Roman and he's got him up to the stand where he is today. Roman's going to do uh, an ice breaking demonstration for us. He'll uh, kick with his uh, shin and his foot and then he'll do another ice break on five blocks of ice with his elbow. Here he is with the um, ice breaking. Yankee's uh, foot, no, back spinning kick. I tell you, these are massive blocks of ice. This is a, a lot harder than uh, what you think it is. These aren't any ice cubes. Now, this is unbelievable what he's going to attempt to do here. Oh, that's a powerful kick there. That's that's Guys, if you've ever seen this live, it is one of the most awesome things. You call it powerful, I call it lunacy. <laughs> I think most people who've never seen it before would say exactly the same thing. This, this guy's a gynecologist back in Russia, and look what he's going to do to this ice. Thank God he's a little more gentle with the ladies. Yes, thank you. Oh, how's the that? power. I mean, this is incredibly hard. Amazing. Uh, Stay with us. We're coming back in a moment. On Fuel, you're watching the Karate World Challenge from South Sydney Juniors Leagues Club in Sydney. Our coverage presented by Action Scaffolding, the CFMEU and Dream Team Management. And tremendous to have you with us around Australia on Fuel. Welcome back to South Juniors Leagues Club at Kingsford. And we are approaching the business end of proceedings. Still ahead on today's program, the grand final. Roman Nestorenko against Lucas Kabilius, and of course the fight for third place that I alluded to prior to that commercial break, the Australian Daniel Trefu against Jolt Below, and here's the profile of Daniel, we're going to see him in action first up, not sure how he fared having gone down in that very tough semi-final, Pete, he might have picked up a few bumps and bruises. Definitely a few bumps and bruises, he'll be sitting out of the back, he'll be sore, but you've got to get it back together. Uh, Zolt, of course, he's had a little bit of a longer break. It'll make it more easier for him to come back to fight this one. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Daniel is the heavier of the two. Let's go down to Rick. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring him out. Please make him welcome again from Hungary, Zolt Below. And the lovely Amanda carrying the flag of Hungary tonight. So here's Jolt. Below the Hungarian, the fight for third place is just seconds away. Still looks super fresh, doesn't he? Doesn't look like he's done anything all day. Hey, he's dancing his way into the arena. 86 kilograms. I, I said that Daniel, his opponent, the heavier of the two men, Daniel weighing in at 95 kg. He's a fairly athletic, though, specimen. Is Jolt below. And this is an important moment in his career. Yeah, third place in this goes a long way. This isn't your average karate tournament from just down the road. This is a big one, guys. All right. Now time for the Australian to be introduced to this very parochial crowd, Rick. Put those hands together. Bring it out. Here it comes. Daniel Trimble. Well, the question here for the Australian is how much has he got left in the tank, Pete? Yeah, it's, it's only a short break and he's straight back out. He would have iced his shins up out the back, have a little bit of a drink of water, maybe a lie down and a massage. But there's only so much you can do in a short amount of time, isn't there? It's 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 going to be hard for him. Daniel's been there before. He, he'll uh, bring out what he needs to do the best here and win. So I got you know, full confidence in Daniel with this. A lot of pride on the line here, isn't there, in this bout? 
There is, you know, this is his hometown. You know, a lot of the people here to hear to, uh, are here to see him. Uh, they might not know, know the other guys in Europe, of course, they're big, but in Australia, a lot of them are unknown, except to the real hardcore fans. Results very focused here. Oh, he's pumped up, isn't he? They're both pumped up. And we are underway. You're now watching the fight off for third. Back spinning kick there. Very flashy technique. Very good. Daniel done well to avoid that. Bouncing around Jolie's, keeping his distance from Daniel. Fighting a lot different where Daniel wants to get in close to him. Almost like a Gary step. Of course, Gary O'Neill coming from Queensland, one of the most exciting fighters Australia ever produced about 10 years ago. Really changed Kyuk Shin by getting up on his toes and moving around. A bit like the Ali of Kyuk Shin. Big hard kick from Daniel. You can hear the crowd. They want Daniel to win, don't they? Daniel's got all his students there, all cheering for him. Uh, Kukushin Karate, the discipline you're watching. World renowned as being the toughest form of karate. Oh, yeah. So there's soft styles of karate, which are awesome. You know, they're, they're a lot to do with the, the martial arts, the more art side. Kukushin is a bit more martial, a bit more, you know, hands-on, so to speak. Almost chin on there. Chin good. on the back of the heel would have put him into next week. Good thing he held his hands up. Yeah, good block there from Daniel. Still have the traditional part of Kyokushin, the carters and what's not, and the, the honor and the respect for the people above them, the grading system like all uh, traditional Japanese martial arts. But this part here, Oyama who started it, really found it important that these guys really know how to fight, the real deal. They're real gentlemen, these guys too, aren't they, Peter, when you talk to them, that They are. You know, they come out here and they go hell for leather, but then you talk to them after and they'll speak to anyone. They've got a real sense of decorum, nice guys. Yeah, also a lot of respect for each other, haven't they? They're fierce opponents out on the mat, but they are quite happy to socialise and spend a bit of time very nice afterwards, people. and it's all good. Yeah, part of the style where they're very humble. Yeah, it is. That's the word, humble. Hard to believe when you watch them in action. Not much humble going on right now, is there? No, no Zolt wants to win here. Daniel's doing well. He's doing real well. It's pretty even right now. They're both popping those techniques out hard and fast. Salt's going to have to do more than that to win it, though. That was too, way too slow. Look at the roll on the ground. <laughs> Daniel, the Australian champion in 05, has contested four world titles previously. South Pacific champion a couple of times. Salt's picking it up a bit now. He's popping those punches out. A bit more of a, a, a longer combination. Oh, that one gone. That was that, the nicest back kick I've seen all day. That would have hurt. That's an understatement. Zolt's putting the pressure on now, last 23 seconds to go. This is where he wants to do it though. Get those referees thinking that you're winning the bout. Daniel needs to put it on to him now. Zolt's played this well. Yeah, he's running in. He's looking for a back kick or something there. Probably could have done it. Daniel needs to pull it out. No, it doesn't look like he's going to get it. And there's a little uh, bag there. Of course, little bag, like I said before, that indicates the end of the bout as well as the referee calling it. So looking as though the Hungarian will get the win there. Yeah, I think so. There it is. Yeah, I think that spinning back kick done it to Daniel right towards the end there. Really slowed it up. Yeah, it hurt him, winded him. Such a strong technique. Difficult to land, but if you land it, yeah, I think that was really the turning point in the bout, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it like Daniel was doing really well there to that back spinning kick come in and, um, yeah, just changed the fight. There's the replay. The Australian gallant in defeat, but Jolt below the winner. Thanks to the crowd. It, he was uh, very cheerful and it's a very good feeling for him. Uh, he's very happy to be here and uh, thank you for the crowd. Thank you, sir. So now we advance to the final. This is where they'll put it all on the line. Lithuania's Lucas Kabilius to face the reigning world champion from Russia, Roman Nestorenko. And atmosphere and tension building here. And there's the stats for the world champ.
I really think this world champ's going to bring it home. You know, if he starts to throw those head kicks, it's going to be all over for uh, Lucas. But Lucas, unbelievable spoiler. I'm excited to see what he can do as well. Yep, yeah, you've called him a spoiler a number of times today. Perhaps underrated on the world stage. It could well be the day that he takes or makes the world stand up and take notice. Here's Rick Powell. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the big time has arrived. This is the grand final tonight. Let's welcome out from Lithuania, Lucas Kubilius! Big yep. smile on his face. Don't see that often in a final. <laughs> Obviously feeling confident. He's a big man. He's in with a good chance, you know. He's got that, uh, that really spoiler-type technique. Might just be enough to put Roman off his game, and he could win. He is bigger. He's 110 kilos. That's almost as big as me. Like I said, not like quite as big as me, but he's still a big, big man. He's three centimetres taller than his opponent as well, which can only be beneficial in this sport. 188 centimetres. That's about six foot three in the old money. He's, he's unique. He's, he's got a real relaxed, boppy style. At this stage, he appears to be quite relaxed, and when it's almost time, he just switches on like a light switch. He does, doesn't he? I hear that music. Every time I hear this music, I get pumped up, I tell you. Yeah, of course. That means that uh, the uh, the uh, Russian, Roman Nestorenko, and his arrival in the auditorium is imminent. Lucas Kabilius about to face the world's best in a hugely important event. Let's go down to Rick Powell to introduce the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes, the pride of Russia. Let's hear it for Roman Nesterenko. Well, here he comes. Cool as a cucumber, but these guys both know it's for the money and for the title. This is going to go hell for leather. Yeah, hey. Roman means business. And for the prestige. Ahead of this bout, Mark, you've got some more people you'd like to thank. Yeah, I'd like to thank um, Shin Kakashin Australia and Shion Peter Volk from down there in Ballarat for supporting this event and all the Shin Kakashin referees and officials involved in the event today. Many thanks. You can see that little kid just off there to the side. He's pumped up. He probably thinks he wants to do this in a couple more years. I remember when I was younger doing Kyokushin, I looked up to these guys and thought, wow, if I can only just do this one day, I'll be a happy kid. I tell you, this is exciting. I love this stuff. This is the finals. You know it's for the title, the money, the prestige, everything. Pete Graham, reigning world kickboxing champion, working with us in commentary today. I wish you'd enjoy your job. You're, you're lacking enthusiasm. Just kidding. Here we go, the final. The inaugural full contact karate world challenge. Look at that. Straight in there, Lucas, with some unusual techniques, trying to sweep the leg a little bit. Of course, that's completely legal in Kyokushin. Holding a little bit. Very frustrating to have someone doing things that you've never seen before. Not never seen before, but something that you don't normally train with. I think he's throwing Roman off his game there. He's going to try to throw Roman off his game because I tell you, once Roman is on his game, he'll go absolutely nuts and just try to knock you the hell out and win as easily as he can. Yeah, he launches into a flurry of kicks and punches, doesn't he? He does that. He likes to pick it up. You know, you can see that Lucas as well, he'll almost look like he's not really doing anything, and then he'll pick it up and try to finish you off quickly as well. Russian right-hand side of screen. East Russia. He's from uh, East part of Russia, Roman. Well done to you, Mark, and uh, your colleagues for having the vision, determination to put this event together. Hope it gets bigger and bigger in the years to come. It will, Tappy. We've got another one next year and more to come. And uh, it's not just me, it's a whole team effort. You know, Dream Team, CFEU, and a lot of other people have helped us put this on. I see Raymond going for that low kick. You can tell he wants to win. Lucas doesn't want to take a bar of it. I've got to say, Peter, Tom Lavar's done a good job with the referee. Now, Tom Lavar, top referee, isn't he? He's, he, he's just let the fights flow. Don't hold each other. That's what he's saying there. Lucas, of course, coming in, not letting Roman have any of those good techniques that he likes to throw around. Now Roman's killed me. Anyway. Throw that knee. Big knee there. Inside of the legs there. Inside kicks, yeah. They're holding a bit. It's been a bit scrappy. I'd like to see them stand back a bit and really go for it. 
It is a final. Someone's got to take a bit of a risk. I mean, I'm saying that, but I know how much these guys want to win it as well. You know, they don't want to make any mistakes. They want to really go home with that title. Step back, trying to get a bit of ground. Kicking that front leg out. Good move. Going to make it hard for him to kick if you keep on smashing that front leg. You can see the frustration. Yes, it is a bit scrappy, Peter. Now Roman's trying to cut loose on him. You can see Lucas holding the gear there. You're not allowed to do that. You can see, feel that frustration, can't you? You really yeah, want them just very, to... Very frustrated, yeah. Roman wants to let loose here, and yeah, Lucas is frustrating the hell out of Keeps him. closing it up. You see that? I really don't like it when it's scrappy like that. Trying to kick those legs. Looks like a bit of a punch in the mouth there. Pretty even at the end of the first three-minute period. Yes. Well, for me, uh, you know, I'm going to give it to Roman. I mean, he's not holding. Lucas is holding. I, I just don't like That's him when he does that. Straight in the mouth. I think it was a little bit of dramatic. And the uh, Lithuanian has gone down. Let's have another look at that. Oh, Lucas looks like... He's, uh, he's doing well. He looks a little tired. You know, he did get clipped just about. He was just about to show it on the replay. He looked like he got it pretty hard, but he might just, you know, it's not as dramatic as what it seems to be. He's probably just playing a little bit of possum, so to speak. Give him a few seconds, get his breath back, trying to take that advantage. A bit like a professional foul, so to speak. He did get popped in the head. It probably hurt him a bit, but he'll get up and keep going, I'm sure of it. He's, uh, he's getting checked there by what it looks like to be the doctor. But he'll stand back up. Yep, he's fine. He'll come back. Live to fight another day, so to speak. He's yeah. already got a shake of the head. He would have got his breath back. Give him a bit of a second win. Yeah, I think so, Peter. More Roman, than tough enough to cop it. Roman was really cutting loose on him there. Yeah, definitely an accidental foul. You know, I don't think any of these guys will intentionally come out and try to punch each other in the head. Of course, the rules are you're not supposed to punch the head, Peter. Yeah, you can't punch the head. Uh, of course, knees and kicks uh, are completely allowed. What's happened here? Ikiwaki, once again, that's a draw. They'll go again. So come over, indicate they've got two minutes. It's a little bit shorter than the other round. And they'll go flat stick. They should want a bit of a shake of the hand there. I think people watching will be intrigued yeah. as to why you can knee and kick to the head but not punch. Yeah, well, when they first started doing Kyokushin, they had kickboxing. And uh, Masayama, the guy who started Kyokushin Karate, he wanted to show a difference in a style and make sure people were kicking and kneeing and showing the other techniques. Of course, back in the day, everyone was uh, in the Western world was just boxing. So we, uh, we try to change it up a little bit, show the demonstration of the kicks and the knees and the elbows. Still pretty scrappy. Someone's going to have to do something here to really show that they want to win this. They're going to have to be a little bit more intelligent. Roman getting frustrated, Lucas spoiling. We can see what they can do, but they're really going to have to, to do something different. Lucas trying with that elbow again, but it's not really a stopping technique. No, it's not doing the That's job. That's been one of his favourite ploys all day, hasn't it? It has, the but... elbow it, down on the collarbone. You know, unless he smashes that collarbone and breaks it, he's not really going to stop anyone with it. He's going to have to use his weight advantage and his height advantage, which, to me, he's not really using. Roman moving around, trying to make that room. Now, that's a little smarter. Kick that leg. Lucas Kurtz grabbing him and holding him. Yeah, Lucas is just trying to spoil, but he can't just spoil. He's not going to win any fights by spoiling. He's got to look for that knockout. For me, he's behind it now. He's only got a couple of seconds more to win this bout. Otherwise, it's going to slip away from him, and that's sad because this is massive. Roman's cutting loose on him, and looks like maybe Lucas could be a bit tidy. Yeah, maybe that extra weight is holding him back. He does look fatigued. You can see him holding onto that gi, and you can see the frustration on Roman's face here. For my money, he's going to win it. I think you're right, Peter. I think Roman's won this fight. Lucas with a little bit of a push there. He's got to step back and just go hard at it. Almost time. You can see that frustration. He's putting his hands out there, yes. Let's see. Oh, yeah. tried with the jumping front kick. Not quite enough. Needed to go a little bit more. Come on, guys. Finish up with something good. And there it is. That's it. Can I get... really don't think Lucas has done no. enough to win that. He spent more time hanging on than anything else the last minute. Yeah, but I just think uh, uh, Roman was just... Uh, he, he fouled less and he scored more. For... I think the judge is going to indicate that's a win. World title. That's exciting. Yeah, that's I tell it. You. 
There it is, folks. He's won it. He's got to be happy with that. Sometimes he's just checking. He doesn't actually speak English. Roman Nestorenko, winner of the inaugural full contact karate world challenge. Tough day at the office. Lots of great fighters. Lots of great fights. He's going to be happy. He's got a long way to go home, but I tell you, it makes that trip a hell of a lot more enjoyable when you've got a trophy and a big check. It That's certainly does. It does. He'll be happy at that. So is Kate Roach and Roman Resnick will be happy at that too. The you see, scaffolding replay. You can see Lucas trying to hold onto that key. He just doesn't look like he's got enough pepper in the uh, in the shaker, so to speak, to get over the edge. Trying to hold on, trying to spoil too much. And of course, Roman really struggling to hit hard. He's looking for it. There's that foul. That's that punch. But he, he brought it on himself. He was just holding too much. Very frustrating for him. Down to Rick. Just before we get to the presentations, Roman, a very difficult fight. You heard Lucas sound. Um, we thought it might have been over at that point. He knew his player um, very well. He had played with him in the past. It's a very